guys. It has been a long time since I've filmed anything for this channel. You probably see this completely new background. Um, I've moved house. Um, I moved out of my parents' house, so I'm still going to do some videos with the really nice like bird wallpaper background. But for the moment, we're in my bedroom with the cute fairy lights. Today, we're going to be talking about five books that changed my life. As you probably know, I am a big book geek. I love reading. I've got a degree in literature. Pretty much seals the deal. I thought I'd just talk about five books that like completely changed my life and how I look at the world and pretty much made me who I am today. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This is a really battered copy and some of it has got writing in it somewhere I think. Um, so Wuthering Heights was something that I studied in sixth form uh, English literature. I never had any intention of reading Wuthering Heights. I'm not into classic books and um, I would much prefer... I know they really itchy. I'm not into classic books and I much prefer kind of science fiction. But Wuthering Heights is on the reading list and my teacher decided that that's what we were going to read for our exams. So we all bought these really like, Twilight was really popular at the time. So the whole class ended up buying like these really weird Twilight style versions of Wuthering Heights. The reason I love the book so much is because it's kind, it's not really a happy ending. It's really dark and twisted and it's got a really weird atmosphere throughout the whole book. The whole book is set in the moors so it's really isolated and the characters are all kind of extreme personalities. The dynamics between the main characters is just insanely good and if you haven't read Wuthering Heights and you want like a dark romance novel then this is the one for you. It was life changing for me because it was kind of the first classic book that I thought oh my god this is actually interesting. So Emily Bronte you got me into classical literature thank you very much. A favourite of a lot of people. Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night Time. It's probably one of the first kind of novels that I actually sat through and read and read again and again and again. I'm one of those people that can read a book a hundred times and never get bored. So the story follows a young boy called Christopher. It's been a long time since I've read it. And Christopher has um, learning difficulties and he ha uh, he's kind of, he can't really see the world the way everyone else does. He's got a form of autism, I can't remember what it is. Anyway, he ends up finding his neighbour's dog dead on the lawn and the story kind of follows him uncovering the mystery of who killed the dog. Um, the reason that I love this book so much is because it was the first kind of novel, like I said, that I actually sat and read and thought about. And um, it gives you a lot of food for thought because the Christopher doesn't see the world the way a lot of other people see the world. So it's interesting how the author captured that kind of point of view and how that has a huge impact on the story and how you can relate to the characters and how much you empathise with Christopher and his whole um, story that he's telling you through his book. He's got this kind of childlike innocence to it which makes the twists in it so much harder and upsetting but it's just a really great novel and if you haven't read it it's quite short so I would highly recommend it. Next up, a bit of a controversial one I think because a lot of people hate it, a lot of people love it, um, but it's my favourite book ever. It's The Time Traveller's Wife. I actually, this was kind of before I became obsessed with books. I went to see the film um, and I really liked the film for some reason because the film is awful but I remember really liking the film and then I saw on the adverts that it was a a book as well. I remember asking for the book for Christmas and um, I got it and I was amazed at how fat it was. I had never read such a chunky book in my entire life. What actually happened when I read it was I fell head over heels in love with this book. The narrative split between a few characters which is really interesting because you get a lot of sense of frustration throughout the book and you know, really trying to make a relationship work when it's it's really struggling. A lot of people don't like it because kind of the morality is questioned a lot in it um, and the actual kind of realistic side of it. Obviously it's about time travel but some of the stuff in it is a little bit 
um, over the top. The first book that I stopped when I finished it, I was like oh, heartbroken and I just wanted to like not read a book ever again <laughs> because I was not over, I was grieving this book. Um, so it's kind of the first book that I fell in love with and it started my obsession for books. A book from my childhood um, and that is A Series of Unfortunate Events. I remember at the time I loved the fact that there was like this big mystery surrounding the novels, nobody knew who Lemmy Snicket was and the books were just really, really like miserable. <laughs> Which I really enjoyed. <laughs> As an adult I actually did uh, my university dissertation on a series of unfortunate events and I love how Daniel Handler, who actually is Lemony Snicket, um, I love how he writes and how it's quite quirky. It basically follows the story of three orphan children. Their house gets mysteriously burnt down along with their parents, which sucks. In this book they get sent to live with Count Olaf, who is their terrifying uncle, cousin, distant relative, I can't really remember. It turns out he's not really interested in the kids and he's going to try and kill them to get their fortune. So they keep trying to escape and the series follows them as they go through various foster parents. I just really liked the mystery aspect of this and um, it was the first book that kind of, it, it is different to other books, like it's got really stupid quotes in it and things that kind of like, you read it as an adult and think, oh god, that's so true. <laughs> and I just really like them and they've got a very special place in my heart, so thank you Lemony Snicket, please, they're great. And finally, it's another series, um, but this book was the first book that really got me into young adult literature. So prior to reading this book, um, I read this book at uni, prior to reading it, I would have never have picked up a young adult book as an adult and read it because I was kind of snobby and I was like, oh, I'm not reading that, for kids. But then I found this series which is called Chaos Walking and it's by Patrick Ness who is one of my favourite authors ever. I can't actually find the first one in the series. It's called The Knife of Never Letting Go and that was the one that I wanted to talk about but I have no idea where I've put it. I must have left it at my old house with my mum and dad. Um, so I just thought I'd show you the final one in the trilogy, another nice chunky book. The story follows a boy called Todd, he's growing up in this random planet, um, it's kind of like a science fiction. Where everyone can hear each other's thoughts, he's the youngest of the town and he's about to go through this kind of um, coming of age. Also another thing about the town is there's no women in the town, it's all men and they can all hear each other's thoughts. So um, as he's walking around the woods, he bumps into a spaceship and he bumps into a girl who runs away. He goes back to the town and the town has gone mental. The story then follows Todd and this girl who's called Viola um, and how they try and escape the mayor, the evil mayor who's coming after them and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things in this book that are just amazing. I think one of the reasons I fell in love with it is because I just Bef like I said, before I read like young adult fiction, I just couldn't comprehend that it could contain so many deep issues. I just thought, those books are for kids, they're really boring, they're not going to entertain me. But The Knife of Never Letting Go and the whole Cow's Walking trilogy brings up so many talking points. I highly recommend this trilogy if you can... Oh, don't hit yourself with a face in it though. <laughs> this is the last one, which is Monsters of Men, but if you can get... The Knife of Never Letting Go, I strongly recommend picking it up. Patrick Ness is a really good author, he's got a really amazing way of capturing characters that makes them really likeable and they've all got their own individual personalities. Um, and it's just really great story writing if you want something um, that's going to make you question society, <laughs> pick up one of these books. So, those are the five stories that changed my life. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, drop a comment on some books that have changed your life or books that got you into reading, books that you hated, books that you loved. Let me know in the comments below and we can talk about them there. And I will speak to you all soon. Bye!